Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. A couple of months ago, you might remember we first put NVIDIA's support for FreeSync monitors to the test. I went and got every FreeSync monitor I had in the office, hooked it up to a collection of NVIDIA GPUs, and verified that in all cases, Adaptive Sync worked as expected with an NVIDIA GPU and these monitors. Well, LG saw that video and noticed we didn't test any LG monitors. So they sent me an email asking if I wanted to test five of their latest FreeSync gaming monitors to check out whether they too work with NVIDIA GPUs. I thought, well, you know, why not? We haven't reviewed any LG monitors on the channel in the past, and this is a great opportunity to revisit NVIDIA's support for FreeSync with a collection of new and in some cases quite popular gaming displays. As a quick refresher, with a driver update almost two months ago, NVIDIA opened up support for the Vaser Adaptive Sync, aka FreeSync Standard, with their Pascal and newer graphics cards. NVIDIA's current GPU architectures have always had the ability to drive Adaptive Sync displays. It's effectively how G-Sync works in laptops, but for desktop cards, it was locked down so NVIDIA could focus on their G-Sync monitor ecosystem. Since the update, what we're left with now is a multi-tier monitor ecosystem for NVIDIA GPU owners. At the top, we have the monitors that feature a custom G-Sync module, branded as either G-Sync or for HDR monitors, G-Sync Ultimate. Then below that, we have G-Sync Compatible. These are adaptive sync monitors NVIDIA has certified to work properly with their GPUs. They have almost the same feature set as full G-Sync displays, and they will have adaptive sync enabled out of the box. However, there's also an option in the NVIDIA control panel to enable adaptive sync on any FreeSync monitor, regardless of whether it's been certified or not. So you really don't need to go out of your way to buy a G-Sync compatible monitor because any FreeSync display should work fine. And that's what we showed you in our previous video and what many of you guys have been telling us in the comments. Of course, NVIDIA did take the time when introducing G-Sync compatible monitors to blast the FreeSync ecosystem for having all sorts of issues like blanking, flickering, and so on. But really, these aren't problems with FreeSync. They're monitor-specific issues, and if you encounter them, you should return the display. NVIDIA suggested that their compatibility certification process was necessary to ensure you don't end up with these issues, but from what we've seen, 99% of uncertified monitors seem to work perfectly fine. The testing in today's video is very straightforward. I plugged in all five of the LG monitors into my test rig loaded up with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, one at a time, of course. The next step was to enable FreeSync in the monitor's settings. All five displays came with FreeSync disabled out of the box. You need to turn it on in the on-screen display for NVIDIA to recognize it as an adaptive sync monitor. Where possible, I used the extended FreeSync mode, which delivers the widest refresh rate range. LG actually notes this mode, which is almost a form of display overclocking, could cause flickering, but I'll discuss whether this was an issue when I go through each model. After enabling FreeSync in the display settings, from there I enabled Adaptive Sync in the NVIDIA control panel, and then I was pretty much good to go. All five monitors were recognized as supporting Adaptive Sync by the GPU after FreeSync was enabled, so that's a good sign. And in case you're wondering, one of NVIDIA's requirements for G-Sync compatible certification is to have FreeSync enabled by default. So I suspect the reason these LG monitors didn't immediately pass certification was down to FreeSync being disabled out of the box. Bit of a nitpick requirement because it means many FreeSync monitors fail certification despite being otherwise perfect. Anyway, let's go through each monitor individually from here and talk about whether I encountered any issues with the display's adaptive sync implementation on NVIDIA GPUs. Basically, what I was looking for was to check whether there were any flickering issues, blanking, refresh rate inconsistencies, and so on when adaptive sync was activated. In particular, I was interested in seeing how these monitors behave around potentially problematic points, such as below the minimum refresh rate and transitioning in and out of the refresh window. The first monitor to be tested was the LG 32 GK850F, a 32-inch flat VA panel with a 1440p resolution and 144Hz maximum refresh rate. This is also a FreeSync 2 certified display supporting HDR with Display HDR 400 certification. This monitor has a 50 to 144Hz refresh window, so it supports a crucial feature called Low Frame Rate Compensation, or LFC, which essentially extends the Adaptive Sync window down to 1Hz, allowing the monitor to have no minimum refresh. You'll only get a good FreeSync experience with monitors that support LFC, so I'm glad to report LFC works fine with this monitor and NVIDIA GPUs as expected. I encountered no other issues with this display, the transition inside and out of the refresh window, so around that 
45 to 55 hertz range was handled perfectly without flickering or other artifacts. LFC is activated as expected here. And the monitor works with FreeSync whether you have HDR enabled or disabled, so turning on HDR has no impact on the adaptive sync experience. A great result, and this is a monitor that I think is great quality in general with a top-notch VA panel, plus I love that it's flat. The 24GL600F is a more basic gaming monitor in LG's lineup, featuring a 24-inch 1080p 144Hz TN panel. It's designed to slot into that budget high refresh category. Again, no issues with this monitor, it too supports LFC, and I saw no problems transitioning in and out of the refresh window. The only minor concern I have here is this is a monitor that does not come with a DisplayPort cable in the box. Not a big deal really as a DisplayPort cable costs all of five bucks, but if you use the included HDMI cable, you will not get FreeSync support as Nvidia GPUs don't support FreeSync over HDMI. Over DisplayPort though, as expected, there are no issues here. Next up, we have the 27GK750F, and this is a rare 27-inch 1080p 240Hz TN display. Normally, you only see this refresh rate at 24 inches in size. A decent unit, this one, especially if you want that super high refresh rate. When gaming, this monitor feels really fast, and some of that is down to lightning quick response times. Anyway, this isn't a review of the display, but I am happy to report it works perfectly with adaptive sync on an NVIDIA GPU. Again, it supports LFC with a 48 to 240 Hz refresh window, and across the entire refresh range, everything is handled well, no flickering or anything like that. The fourth display is the 32GK650F, so it's almost the same monitor as the 32GK850F, but without HDR support and at a lower price tag to match. It's still a 32-inch 1440p 144Hz VA, again with a 50 to 144Hz refresh window. You guessed it too, there are no issues with this display either, and with this combination of specs, you're getting a great gaming experience if you can you know, drive it and have enough GPU horsepower there. Certainly with the 2080 Ti I was using, playing games in ultra settings above 100 FPS at 1440p was a blast. The last display of this 5 is the 34GK950F, a 34-inch IPS ultrawide with a 3440x1440 resolution, 144Hz maximum refresh rate, and HDR support. It's another one that supports FreeSync 2, although this isn't a feature you can use with NVIDIA GPUs. You can still use Adaptive Sync and HDR at the same time, you just can't enable FreeSync 2 in games that support it like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, as the feature is exclusive to AMD GPUs. Again, no issues here whatsoever with standard FreeSync. Like the other monitors I've tested, it too supports LFC thanks to a 60 to 144Hz refresh range, and I didn't experience any flickering or blanking problems either below or above the minimum refresh. I also wanted to specifically check the maximum refresh range here as well, because 144Hz is a step above the 120 and 100 hertz monitors we've been seeing with similar specs lately, but even right up to 144 hertz, there were no issues using the extended FreeSync mode. So as expected, all five FreeSync monitors work perfectly with an NVIDIA GPU to provide a fluid adaptive sync experience. All are high refresh models that support LFC, so the experience is really good here. There's no abrupt transition between FreeSync on and off as your frame rate drops. It's overall a really smooth experience on all of these displays. Had LG enabled FreeSync on these monitors by default, I believe they would pass G-Sync compatible certification. But even though they are not certified, they still work perfectly when you enable FreeSync. And I'm sure getting the hardware unbox seal of certification will be good enough for you guys anyway. LG seems to have really perfected their implementation of FreeSync since the early days. They were one of the first manufacturers to jump aboard the adaptive sync train, and in 2019, their range has grown significantly to encompass lots of different models. Even their new TVs for this year support FreeSync over HDMI for AMD GPU owners. Like I said in the original video on this topic, I think it's safe to say if you purchase a new FreeSync model today that it will work fine with NVIDIA GPUs. You definitely shouldn't expect to see flickering or any other issues whether you buy an LG monitor or something from a different brand. It's really only with the very early, older FreeSync models uh, that you might encounter some issues, but even then I haven't heard too many reports of specific models consistently not working. My recommendation continues to be to just buy a FreeSync monitor and not bother with G-Sync, and these results from a great selection of LG monitors just reinforces this. I'm actually looking forward to doing a full review on some of these models in the coming weeks, so look out for those because there might be a bit of an LG monitor testing onslaught. Anyway, that's it for this one. Subscribe to Hardware Unbox for more content as always. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat, and I'll catch you in the next one.